I'm super excited to be here tonight with you all and excited to talk about marketing. Um, I know starting a new business or growing a business can be overwhelming. You might feel stuck. You're wearing many hats running your business. You're trying to find clients. Where to get started? Do I need a website? How often do I have to post on my social media accounts? Those are all questions we all as small business owners ask ourselves. In this three-part marketing series, you'll learn about the basics of marketing, how to create a simple marketing plan, and use low-cost resources for small business owners. In our part one, we talked about the one-on-one -on -one marketing. Today, we will talk about the marketing channels. And next week, we'll talk about an amazing tool called Canva, which is a great workshop for beginners. You can sign up for next week on the MCSC website. I'd like to start off with sharing my story as a small business owner. I actually didn't become an entrepreneur myself until I was almost 40, so it's never too late. After almost 20 years in the corporate world, I started off as a virtual assistant and business consultant. Working remote with a flexible schedule allowed me to follow my passion and still be present for my daughter. Well, flexible schedule sounds great on the one hand, but as many of you know, there are many late nights and weekends involved. In 2018, I connected with a women business center and started as a marketing and business consultant. Over the years, I supported several local entrepreneurs with starting their business, creating a sales and marketing strategy, budgeting and staying focused on their goals. Through the Women Business Center, I also started my own small business, Scoop the Magic. Scoop the Magic is non-dairy frozen dessert, aka vegan ice cream. I started selling at local farmers markets all over San Luis Obispo County. The feedback from my customers kept me going. I heard over and over again, thank you for doing this. When I received raving five-star reviews from strangers, that's when I noticed that people must really like my product. I started approaching local grocery stores and built a local network of vendors over the past three and a half years. Every time new stores placed a, their first order, I was terrified it wouldn't sell. But each store sold out in the first week and I realized I created something unique. It wasn't always easy though, but it's rewarding. I ran through a lot of hoops and I had several moments where I wanted to give up. I'm a solopreneur, I do everything myself. I make the ice cream, I design my packaging and make the deliveries and my marketing. I have plans to grow and expand, but Scoop the Magic started as a side gig and still is. I still work most hours as a virtual assistant. Why I'm telling you so much about me? Being an entrepreneur is not easy, but I wouldn't change a thing. I just want you to know that I understand what you're going through. And I don't have all ducks in a row either. But with gaining a lot of experience, I learned that I can support others with working out what matters the most for them and their business. To start and run a business is overwhelming, but I truly love to support my clients in their journey. Okay, let's get started. Today we talk about marketing channels. If you were not able to attend part one of our three-part series, I want to give you a brief summary about our first session because it's important to know your basics before you select your marketing channels. Marketing is a non-negotiable for any business with a desire to grow. Not all marketing techniques rely on big budgets, specialized skill sets, and many resources. There are techniques and tactics that will drive impressive growth without requiring deep pockets or a big team. And as a small business owner, we most likely don't have a big budget or a big team. So last week or two weeks ago, we talked about establishing goals. You likely have a vision of what you need your marketing to accomplish. It might be to increase traffic to your website, drive more phone calls, or get more customers to come through your doors. 
And these are all examples of common marketing goals. But as is, they're useless. Your goals need objectives. You see, goals are just a general idea of what you want to accomplish. Objectives are how you'll make it happen and how you determine it to succeed. Goals without objectives are useless. One of the most common mistakes in small business marketing is not setting goals. You can't simply point yourself in a direction and march forward. You need a plan. Many small businesses approach marketing and wind up with decision paralysis. There's just so much you can do. It's hard to know what you should do, let alone where you should start. How to approach marketing? Before you step into attracting customers, what do you need to have in place? You need a clear value proposition. Your value proposition is a short, distinct statement about how your business is different from every other company that says they do the same thing. The USB unique sell about selling proposition communicates the value of your product or service to customers and why they should purchase the said item. Value propositions show why what you offer is unique and the best among the competi competitors. So ask yourself, what makes your business attractive? What makes you unique? What problem do you solve? It should be something that can live as a headline with a supporting sentence or a few bullet points. It should be front and center in your messaging and be the foundation by which you build all of your marketing around. It must be simple, clear, and easy to understand in five seconds. How does the brand aim to solve the problem? We look at who we're selling to, and this is known as your target market. You want to understand why they are and what motivates them, who they are and what motivates them. Your target market is not everyone. It is a specific group of people that you believe will resonate best with your marketing message. It is much easier to tailor your messaging and your marketing when you know who you're talking to. And why should a customer get the problem solved by your product or service? It's not a secret that the success of a business depends on having customers. And in order to have customers, you need to find them and you have to know them. If you, mark, if you are in marketing without really knowing your customer, then please stop. So we talked about customer segmentation and finding your ideal customer. And I gave an example with Scoop the Magic, um, which is dairy-free ice cream. And I could say, oh, everyone likes ice cream. Isn't everybody my customer potentially? But I wanna focus my marketing on those that want ice cream that is non-dairy, so those that are lactose intolerant, and those that want an ice cream with clean ingredients, with clean and organic ingredients. Here we go. <laughs> Hold on, I missed it here. How a customer will come to interact with your product to decide if it's right for them. And this messaging is present at every touch point from the very first visit to your website. The interaction on an advertisement all the way through to the decision to purchase. Pursue a customer to buy, you must communicate your value effectively and you do this through strategic messaging. One of the main attributes of strategic messaging, messaging is consistency. The best messaging is always simple and consistent. We also talked about the importance of a good and convincing story. Storytelling captures people's attention and motivates them to take action. People buy on emotion and then justify it with facts. And be clear, avoid fancy words and use more conventional language. And be obvious. Don't assume that your audience understands terms that you use in your communication. Use obvious words or define ones that aren't so obvious. Understand your audience tell a great story, and be authentic. Marketing is about the entire journey. It's about how a consumer feels while engaging with your product or service, 
how convincing your solution to their problem is, how pleasant you're making the experience, and so on. You want a marketing strategy that covers every touch point. In part one of our three-part series, I also introduced the one-page marketing plan, which is a place where you put all the information you're capturing. This is meant to put your problems front and center so you can generate effective ideas. So today we talk about marketing channels. Marketing channels are your path to the consumer, to the customer. And it's how you communicate the existence of what you're selling and pick the channels that your customer segments are spending the most time with. There are so many marketing channels to choose from. It can be overwhelming. Where to start? and how to narrow down the list. Between email, print, online ads, and social media, just to name a handful, your options are nearly infinite. Please note, it's impossible to be active, active in every marketing channel. You have to select the ones that make the most sense for your business. And in order to do that, you'll need to understand the platforms that you have access to and how they might benefit you. And what's going to work for you is really highly dependent on your audience. You'll need to go where your customer is, but also where it makes sense to be active as a brand. It can be tempting to pursue a channel simply because it's popular. Don't overestimate in any channel that isn't the right fit for your customer or what you're selling. Make an investment into exploring channels that are available to you. If they're new and foreign, well, join as an observer and follow other brands. Treat it like moving to a new town. Above all, invest in channels where your message lands with the right audience, where they are most likely going to be engaging with. Marketing channels are how you distribute your message and your goal, especially in small business marketing, is to identify which marketing channels should belong on your list and which ones you just can't accommodate. Once you know what marketing channels you're investing in, you need to develop marketing campaigns. Campaigns are the collection of all the activities and messaging needed to move to buyer through the customer journey. But with small business marketing, it can feel tedious to think through creating campaigns. For starters, simplify. Less is truly more. The more information that you try to pack into your campaigns, the less attention they often receive. Let's say you're putting a flyer together. Don't pack it full of words, highlight enough information to make the viewer curious, and then leave them with like an URL or a QR code to visit where they can capture all the remaining details. We often want to make sure the prospective customer knows everything about our product or service. And in an ideal world, we would have their undivided attention and we couldn't walk them through each aspect of our value proposition. But the truth is, we don't have that luxury. You cannot succeed by saturating the creative with every detail. Next, be concise with your words. Once you made the sale, stop talking. There is no reason to continue your messaging and your campaigns beyond, beyond what is absolutely necessary. When you develop any advertisement or campaign, protect the brand. Everything you do must be on brand. Grab attention. You must stand out from all the noise. Show the value. You want to demonstrate or state the value proposition in a clear way. Invoke action. Give the customer a reason and language that inspires them to take action. And then affirm action. You want to make sure they feel like they've made the right um, choice. If I was creating an advertisement for a newspaper, I would start by protecting the brand. This means I'll make sure the logo is clearly displayed, that it's not obscured, and that the placement of the advertisement will not be near anything controversial. And then I'll find a way to grab attention. With a newspaper ad, it might be a really catchy headline. 
and that headline should be written in my brand's tone. If the brand is cheeky, then be cheeky. If the brand is confident, be confident. It just has to be, it just has to be attention grabbing on and on brand. From there, make sure your value proposition is clear. As a small business, this is your differenti differentiation factor and it's important that you display it. And finally, make sure you have a call to action and a reason why. Maybe it's a call today or save 10% or book now for a free consultation. Make sure there's that call to action and then the reason to take it. And from there, affirm that call to action. If they call, will it be a pleasant experience? At the end of the day, your goal is to create campaigns that connect the dots through the marketing funnel. It's not just one post or one email. It's an entire series all connected together. Let's talk about social media. It is no surprise that organizations want to use these platforms for advertising their brands while we all spend so much time on social media. But what works for one brand won't work for another. Evaluate the use of social media, understand your landscape and question why your customer would be following your social media account. In my opinion, not every business needs an Instagram or Facebook account. Prioritize. Are you going to reach your ideal customer on social media? It might not be on Instagram, but it might be, for example, on LinkedIn, if you're engaging with other organizations. You need to know who your target is, what their needs are, what social platforms they use, and how they talk and interact. Then, make sure you're present on those platforms and engage in authentic conversation with your audience. Focus on engaging rather than promoting. Social media is not for one-way communications. Of course, you can talk about your product and what you offer, but don't neglect comments and questions. Monitor the conversation and make sure to react or respond. Consumers don't follow brands to be sold to nonstop. They're interested in inspiration, education, discounts, and even product insight. If you post things that matter to your audience, chances are much higher they'll comment and share. In other words, they'll engage. Our next channel is event marketing. What is event marketing? It's about bringing your brand to life and creating a strategy to attract prospective customers to your booth. Events can take place in multiple formats, such as an in-person event or online events, like webinars or even hybrid of both. There are a variety of options available when deciding on your event strategy, such as exhibiting, sponsoring, or attending only. You can go to a trade show, you have a booth at a trade show, you network at the trade show. With Scoop the Magic, I started solely at Farmer's Market. Nobody knew my business, and before COVID, we did all the sampling, so it was the best investment for me to have people sample my ice cream and then build a network of local grocery stores where they could go later and buy more. Your event marketing strategy can only reach its full potential if you're attending the right event. Think about what you're looking to achieve and your budget before evaluating the event. Who is likely to attend and its theme for the year? Event marketing is a great advantage as many of your prospects and key decision makers are all at the same place at the same time. You may be able to achieve an authentic connection at the event that might otherwise take months to build via traditional marketing and communication. Next up is public relation. Public relations is defined as the management of reputation and image. PR aims to increase awareness improve business reputation, and build trust. Public relation focuses on editorial content for promotional activities. In public relation, we also make use of third-party endorsements 
and earned media to create publicity. This is different from marketing activities in the sense that marketing uses paid for advertising to create awareness. Additionally, PR aims to share value adding and trustworthy information as opposed to convincing a crowd to purchase a product. For example, advertising activities will share product specific content such as sustainable features and capabilities. And public relation will enhance these efforts by sharing thought leadership stories about the creators behind the product and their vision. Press releases are the most commonly used public relation tool in peer campaigns. Affordable cost, reaching their target audience, add value, contribution to the branding process and sustainability are key benefits of press releases. They also contribute to improving their recognition, reliability, image, reputation, prestige, revenues and visibility of people, organizations or institutions. So what's the difference between public relation and newsletter? Public relation is sent to media outlets and newsletters are sent to your customers and your network. You share re relevant and valuable information with your network of customers, prospects, and subscribers. Newsletters give you direct access to your audience inbox, allowing you to share engaging content, promote sales, and drive full traffic to your website. Which we're coming to email marketing, which is a powerful marketing channel. So it's a form of direct marketing as well as digital marketing that uses email to promote your business product or service. It can help make your customer aware of your latest items or offer by integrating it into your marketing automation efforts. It can also play a pivotal role in your marketing strategy with leading generation, brand awareness, building relationships, or keeping customers engaged between purchases through different types of marketing emails. I'm wondering, does anybody know when the first email was ever sent? Question. Okay, I'm gonna spill, I'm gonna spill in. It was in 1971. <clears throat> email has become such a popular marketing tool for businesses, partly because it for forces the user to take some kind of action. An email will sit in your inbox until it's read, deleted, or archived. Email marketing can help you build relationship with your audience while also driving traffic to your blog, to your social media, or anywhere else you'd like your customers to visit. You can even segment your emails and target users by demographic so you're only sending people the messages they will, they will want to see the most. There's also a disadvantage with email marketing. While email marketing seems like the perfect way to reach out to customers, create new prospects, and grow important business relationships, there are some drawbacks. In fact, many businesses are opting to use texting and SMS messaging as another form of communication. Some of the significant downsides to email marketing campaigns our spam. It seems like our inboxes are filled with worthless information. Lose 25 pounds in two weeks. Click here for a big discount. We all get them and nearly instantly hit delete. In addition, we never even see many of these emails because they end up in your junk or spam folder. Unless you're actively avoiding spam filters, these are messages these messages are often just a waste of time for the, camp for the company that sent it. Important for the email is also the size. If your email is too large, it might take a long time to load or even not load at all. In that time, it takes to, in the time it takes to download, a potential customer has just lost interest. Long emails are also overwhelming and you use your customer interest. Have small specific sentences, and then have a link with read more that um, links to your website or to your blog or anything you wanna offer. 
So competition disadvantages aside, email marketing is a popular form of marketing, which means that your email isn't going to be the only one flooding users' inboxes. This means that you need to stand out from your competitors. Good copywriting, additional promotions, and capture your audience attention, those are crucial. I want to make you aware that there are national and international email regulations. Make sure you adhere to any legal requirements and applicable laws in your area when sending automated emails. There are specific ones for the United States. For example, you need to have your business address at the bottom in the footer of your email. You need to offer an unsubscribe link. Those are just examples. <clears throat> and then how important is the email subject line? It is crucial. A poor subject line can cause your email to end up in the spam folder. If it isn't captivating, it may not grab the reader's attention and be deleted before it is even opened. The subject line should make the reader want to open and read your email. Newsletter emails are very popular. They often highlight new products and services. They may also include articles, blogs, and customer reviews. Usually, there will be a call to action to move the reader to do something, whether that is reading a new blog post or checking out a new product. But in order to send in newsletters, you need emails. And how can you collect emails? While I was working at Farmer's Market, I had a sign-up sheet at my booth where, where I asked people that um, purchased my product to sign up in my email newsletter. I promise and I will not spam them, of course. Um, and I collected several hundred emails over the years, um, Farmer's Markets and at events. If you're solely on, online, there's options that you can have a pop-up on your website and ask your visitors on your website to sign up for a newsletter. There can be a little promotion. Somebody signs up for a newsletter, they might get 10%. They might get a free product. If you meet a lot on social media in your, for instance, Instagram profile, you can add a link in your link tree where people can sign up for your newsletter. The right networking group can help you build connections and learn from like-minded individuals. Networking can be useful for growing your business, but only if you go into it, in, into it with a strategy. Attend in-person events. Networking online is useful, but the best way to build relationships is by meeting face-to-face. -face. Look for relevant events in your industry, like conferences or trade shows or not networking groups. Locally, we have here NABO, which, which is the National Association of Women Business Owners. We have the Slow Women's Network. We have several Chamber of Commerce, and we have BNI. BNI is a global networking organization with more than 10,000 chapters worldwide, focusing on referral business. When you join, you'll start building relationships with like-minded individuals and finding opportunities through referral marketing. Networking is great for sharing ideas and knowledge. It is natural that networking will result in opportunities and collaborations. And it also can provide connections because solo print, being a solopreneur can be lonely. And last, you increase confidence by talking about your business. I highly recommend you practice your 30 second elevator pitch. So now we're coming to websites. Very important marketing channel. Generally, we can categorize the purpose of most websites into three sections, awareness, sales, and information. A website that represents your business will help you provide online visibility and discoverability, as well as establish or enhance brand recognition. If you have many backlinks from author authorized sites to yours, this will provide credibility to your business. Building a website can be overwhelming though, but you don't have to spend thousands of dollars to get a website. 
There are simple website builder tools like GoDaddy, Wix, Squarespace, and many more. It really depends on what kind of website you're building. What is your goal? Do you just want to have a blog? Do you want an online store? In many cases, you just need a static landing page with contact information so you can be found. It creates credibility with your customers. I believe these days, when you can be Googled and have a website, then you are existing. Of course, there are businesses that do not need a website at all, like Instagram influencers. SEO stands for Search Engine Optimization, which is the process of getting traffic from free, organic, editorial, or natural search results in search engines. It aims to improve your website's position in search results pages. Remember, the higher the website is listed, the more people will see it. It is not easy, but it is not rocket science either. There are, sim there are some simple steps and some require more research. In my opinion, it depends on your marketing goals. Do you need to rank high? Who on here is struggling with building a website? We have amazing consultants, including including me, telling me I'm so amazing, that can help you with your domain and website. Another form of um, website is a blog, which is a great digital marketing tool. They represent a cheap and easy way to control the conversation. And you can write about your company and your team, product launches, developments, events, and so on. You control the style of your writing and you can focus on the areas that you believe will appeal to your target audience. Your content is entirely under your control. You create it, you can edit it, and you can manage it. You own it, but the message needs to get distributed. And how do you get your people to read your blog? You need to select the digital channels to distribute your blog, which is your message. You'll want to select the platform platforms that you can actively use. Ask yourself where your target audience hangs out and the channels that they're interacting with. Also be sure to check where your competitors are active. Say for example, they are social media. While you can manage your business accounts with social media, you're going to have less control over the audience that interacts with you. Social networks encourage engagement and conversation, but what you lose in control, you gain in amplification and reach of your message. Now it can feel like the more spokes, the better, but remember, every spoke needs management. If you don't have the resources, it's better to stick with just a few spokes and maintain to rather than setting up your presence in many platforms and losing control over the conversation or looking as you're no longer active. I also wanna talk about reviews today. Because for local small businesses, customer reviews, especially those on Google, can be powerful. The reviews your small business receives on Google and other review sites like Facebook or Yelp, they can make the difference between your business success or failure. According to a survey from Bright Locals, 77% of consumers say they always or regularly read reviews when they're looking for local business. And that's up 60% from the that's up from 60% from the previous year. 78% say they turn to the internet to find local business information more than once a week. You know that online review matters to your business. But how do you go about getting more reviews on sites that you don't control? The good news is there's a lot you can do. You can start asking. You can start asking for reviews. Ever heard that quote, if you don't ask, you don't get? There's a good reason for its popularity. It rings true for most things in life, including customer reviews. If you ask for reviews, you'll end up getting more, if you get, end up getting more of them. And their research backs this up. According to the Bright Local Survey, 12% of consumers say they left a review every time a business asked them to. 
while another 23 say they left a review more than half the time when asked to. Before we dive into ideas on how you can ask for reviews, there are a few things you can do to make it more likely that your customer will take action when you ask. Verify your profile across review sites. Make sure your profile is verified, if possible, on sites where you'll be seeking reviews. This is extremely important step on Google. If you haven't verified your Google business profile, your business might not even show up on Google Maps or in Google search results. Does everybody know what Google business profile means? If you need help setting up or verifying your Google business profile, I'm happy to schedule a one-on-one -on -one session with you. Or if there's more interest, maybe we can plan out another workshop. If you have a business page on Facebook, go into your settings and verify it. You want to send customers directly to your review page. If your customers feel they have to take too many steps to leave a review, they'll more like, most likely put it on the back burner, which means they may never get around to it. Create a link that will take your customer directly to your review page. You can also create QR codes. There are, Q, there are free QR code generators that can link to your review page on Google or on your website. How to ask for your reviews. Your website is a great place to ask customers to leave you a review. Include a link to your review page in your header and your footer. Use an image editing site like Canva to create an eye-catching image for your link. Consider your timing. You want positive reviews, so the timing of your request is important. To increase the chances of a positive review, choose points along the customer purchase journey when your customer are likely to be satisfied with your product or service. As an example, if you're sending an email after purchase to ask for a review, make sure enough time has gone by for your customer to use the product. On the other hand, be careful not to wait too long. And tell customers how long it will take. If your customer has left a review, has never left a review on Google before, they might think it takes too long. So if they assume it will take a long time, it will be easier to put off writing a review until later. So let them just know it takes a few minutes. Explain that the link will take them directly to the page where they can quickly rate and review the business. Should you offer incentives for reviews? You may have seen other business offering a discount or a free gift in exchange for a review. Is this something you should do as well? Offering incentives for reviews is a gray area. Some review sites prohibit incentives entirely. Google considers incentivized reviews as fake engagement and also frown on discouraging a negative review on soliciting positive reviews only. Yelp prohibits incentives for reviews, and they even take their stance up a step farther by prohibiting the solic solicitation of positive reviews. Users caught doing this may receive a review solicitation penalty. Should you respond to a review? Of course. According to the survey we talked earlier, 89% of consumers say they're fairly likely or highly likely to use a business that responds to all of its reviews, both positive and negative. You might feel you don't need to respond to positive feedback, but a response to a positive review shows customers that you appreciate their thoughts and value their time and attention. It can help build trust and credibility. Responding to negative reviews can be even more powerful. Business owners often feel powerless in the, in the face of a crushingly negative review. But the ability to respond in a fair and reasonable manner gives you an opportunity to address a problem and show other customers how you manage this kind of feedback. Customer reviews have become an essential element of small business success. 
with a bit of time and effort, you can harness the power of reviews for your small business. So we talked about a lot of marketing channels and I wanna jump on the ICE scoring model, which is helping us now to find, figure out what channels are the best and the most effective for your business. These marketing channels are how you distribute your message. And your goal is to identify which marketing channels should belong on your list and which ones you just can't accommodate. And you can't and shouldn't be everywhere simultaneously. So to decide which channels are worth your time, you can use the scoring model called ICE. It's created by Sean Ellis. He's a CEO, a growth hacker. Um, it's a widely credited with inventing this model. He's an angel investor with significant experience helping to grow business. You all have received an email earlier today with um, the attachment of the ICE model. There's also in our chat, at the top of the chat, you can click on the Word doc and use it on your computer if you don't have a print at home. I stands for impact, confidence, and ease. The ICE mythology is a quick and easy way to decide which marketing channels should take priority. When you fill out this worksheet, you'll get a score that lets you rank where to invest your time first. And here's how it works. We have this simple table with five columns. The first column will contain the marketing channels that you want to pursue. The second score is for impact, the third a score for confidence, the fourth ease, and the fifth will be the total score. For each idea, you're going to estimate the impact the confidence and the ease on a scale from one to 10. And we all understand on the marketing challenge we put in either email marketing, event marketing, website, social media. And then for impact, you're going to be asking yourself how much of an improvement will the marketing channel have? In other words, how significantly will it contribute to your marketing goals? One meaning very low impact, two to five meaning minimal impact, six to eight measurable impact, and eight to 10 will be very significant. So you enter your score here under impact. Next, you'll need to in indicate your confidence that this impact metric is as you've guessed. So how confident are you that this will have very little impact or be the total game changer? A rule of thumb here. Zero means this is strictly a hunch. One to 10 is anecdotal. Three to four means you'll have market data and you're confident. Five and six, you have hard evidence and anything over seven is nearly guaranteed. From here, we indicate ease. How much time and effort will it take? Do you have the time, the budget, um, to pull this up. Zero is incredibly difficult and 10 is effortless, effortless. And from here, it's super easy. You multiply those three numbers across and then sort the ideas from the highest score to the low lowest. This way you can quickly determine which one of the objectors are a priority. This process can be incredibly helpful in getting you out of analysis paralysis and helping identify where to take immediate action. Julie? Yes? I'm sorry, we have a question from Julie uh, Smabby. She says, multiply or add the score? Multiply. You can probably do both, but that multiply is what I say. <laughs> okay. So Canva, maybe some of you know Canva. Canva is an online tool and we will be talking in depth about it next week, um, next Thursday from 5 to 6 p.m. here on Zoom. Um, most of you may know the tool Canva, which for me, it plays an immense role in my day-to-day -day work. I use it for presentations, website creation, for brochures, logo design, business cards, social media posts. 
it's a it's a graphic design tool, but you don't have to be, be a designer in order to use it. Canva offers over 250,000 free templates, over 100 design types like social media posts, presentations, and so on, and over a million free photos and graphics. Pre-made size templates make creating size-specific content simple. As such, a free account can easily be created and everything works either via your web browser or on your app, which is amazing. When you're on the go, you can download your designs, you can forward and email it. A pro version is available with additional features and photos, and you can upload your own images and videos to add to your designs. And once completed, you can download the file, share it on your social media, or send it to professional print services to have you printed. So yeah, that's it for now. I'm wondering if any questions came up during the presentations. Anyone who happens to have any questions, you can unmute your mic or you can type your questions into the chat box. I saw that Gabrielle, she, she put already my details in the chat. Here is my email address as well. As mentioned earlier, um, we're offering one-on-one -on -one sessions. If there's anybody who needs help with one of the marketing channels, I'm happy to get together and talk more about it.